Hello, I am Dr. Larry Scherr, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about the importance of a fistula-first approach to dialysis access. Over the past four decades, the number of patients with end-stage renal disease on chronic hemodialysis has increased significantly from 10,000 patients in the mid-1970s to over 300,000 patients today. An important component of the management of these patients is maintenance of vascular access. Morbidity and costs associated with hemodialysis access have increased dramatically with significant challenges posed by an aging patient population. Since the initial description of the arterial venous fistula by doctors Brescio, Semino, Appel, and Herwick in 1966, autogenous fistulas have become the access procedure of choice. Fistulas have lower thrombosis rates, lower infection rates, and increased functional patency rates when compared with the alternatives of prosthetic grafts and central venous catheters. This translates into lower morbidity, fewer hospitalizations, and lower health care costs. Several initiatives have proposed guidelines to improve the care of patients with chronic kidney disease and have specifically addressed the placement and maintenance of hemodialysis access. The Kidney Disease Outcomes Quality Initiative, or KDOKI, was undertaken by the National Kidney Foundation and provides a comprehensive guide to the management of patients with end-stage renal disease. This document provides an algorithm for placement of vascular access, emphasizing the need for autogenous fistulas. In addition, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, in collaboration with physicians caring for patients with end-stage renal disease, has introduced another vascular access initiative called Fistula First. This program provided specific targets for national fistula rates for patients on hemodialysis. To date, Fistula First has exceeded its goals for fistula use in patients initiating hemodialysis and those on continued hemodialysis. The national AV fistula rate, as reported by Fistula First, reached 54.9% in February 2010. Our own Society for Vascular Surgery, under the leadership of Dr. Anton Sadawi, has also established clinical guidelines for the placement and maintenance of arteriovenous hemodialysis access, again emphasizing the importance of early placement of autogenous access in patients with chronic kidney disease. Significant advances have also been made in surgical and endovascular techniques to establish and maintain hemodialysis access. Although the radiocephalic AV fistula remains the procedure of choice, transposition of the basilic vein has been utilized increasingly to provide autogenous access in patients with inadequate cephalic veins. Endovascular techniques allow maturation of immature fistulas and percutaneous treatment of failing or thrombose fistulas and grafts. Overall, the importance of a functioning access in patients with end-stage renal disease on hemodialysis cannot be overemphasized. Arterial venous fistulas continue to provide the best option for decreasing the morbidity and cost associated with hemodialysis access. Early referral and aggressive efforts to provide autogenous access must remain a priority. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.